Hey everybody, for those of you that don't know, my name is Michael Forrest and welcome to It's Quest Time. Now before we get going, I'm going to ask if you could all stay off the stage area here, this way nobody blocks this big display behind me, and to make sure that, you know, i got a little bit of room to move around through the whole presentation thing, right? Now, uh, Quest Time is an event for Oculus Quest users, but all are welcome. So if you're on another device, feel free to hang out, you know, maybe you're thinking about getting a Quest, or maybe you can pick up some useful information that's going to help our growing Quest community, because we're getting a lot of new Quest users in all the time. Um, also, if uh, I can direct your attention to the menu wheel in your lower left, you're going to notice there's a microphone icon at the very top of that. And when that microphone icon is clear, that means we can hear what's happening in your environment. So, uh, you know, we've gone ahead and turned that to red, and this means you're muted. So if somebody comes into your space and says, hey, are you still on that thing? Feel free to answer them because we're not going to hear any of that. Um, also, if, you know, uh, you know, maybe you got a dog barking in the background, right? You're not going to face social ruin back at the campfire by becoming known as the avatar that suddenly started barking during its quest time. Okay, now, uh, let's see. Now, just because you're muted doesn't mean you can't express yourself. You can and should use this pink cheek smiley face on your menu wheel. Then when you press on it, your emoji kind of opens up in front of you, and it gives you a wide variety of options with which to express yourself. So, like, let's say I share something really deep, something meaningful, something really personal, something very powerful, and you feel it start to build up inside of you, you can just let it on out. Just let it flow, just like that, right? And maybe I got some backup dancers backstage, right, that come out and we break into, you know, it's Quest Time the Musical, and then you guys are really impressed, right? So you can throw up applause that I live for, and I can take a moment to drink it all in because it feels good, right? Um, also, wait, what's going on here? Whoa, whoa, it's coming out of the stage. That's insane. Right under me. Okay, that was weird. That doesn't usually happen. All right, uh, also you have, uh, let's see, if I ask you guys a yes or no question, you can say yes by smiling like this. You can say no by frowning like this. Uh, if I say something, do something funny or something like, you know, those emojis come out of the stage for something like that. That's pretty funny, right? So you can just throw up the uh, silly face emoji there to show that you're laughing. And then there's this. This is not how you ask a question. Right? We'll be taking questions and comments at the end. This is how you get my attention if something's gone wrong, right? So, like, maybe I'm waving my hands around like this, right? And I think I'm doing a good job up here. But it turns out nobody could hear me. And I see a bunch of hands pop up. I know something's wrong. Right. Or maybe this display behind me suddenly bursts in the flames. Right. That happened one time. I, you know, moderators have a good sense of humor and we used to give them Terraformer, uh, you know, for special effects and things like that. But that's why we don't give them Terraformer anymore, because, well, they got a little carried away and they tried to burn down the set during one of my shows. It was a dark time. I still remember it. I think about it all the time. It's, it's disturbing. But yeah, we don't do that anymore. So if you, you know, if you need to get my attention for any reason, you just go like this. Right. And if I see one of them, I'm just going to keep on going. Uh, if I see like five of them going on up at the same time, I notice something I, I need to take care of. But while you got these emoji panels still open, I need to ask you some questions so I know how to proceed. How many of you are on a quest right now? Let me see some heart. Show me some love if you're on a quest. Hands up. That works too. Give me some body language. All right. So I'd say the majority of us. That's pretty cool. Uh, how many of you are new quest users? And maybe some smiley faces if you're a new quest user. If you're just starting out. All right. I've got a few. Oh, that's a lot. Okay. How many of you are new to all space? Any new all space users? Let me see. Wow. All right, well, first of all, welcome to Allspace. This is your first day, especially. Wow, oh, that's, that's really cool. Um, how many of you um, used to be on a go and you're upgrading to, you've upgraded to a quest? We're thinking about it. There's some smiley faces if that's the case. Anybody? Any former go users here? Okay. All right. Maybe I'm the only one. Oh, there's a couple. Good. Oof. All right. See, I started out on an Oculus Go, and uh, when I was waiting for my quest to arrive, I, I was very focused on getting this other hand. Because if you've noticed by now, you know, go users have this one controller, right? They have one hand. And uh, I grew up in Brooklyn, so I'm used to expressing myself with my hands. I talk with my hands a lot. And in old space, all anybody saw me was, you know, going like this all the time, right? And I didn't feel like I was expressing myself as fully as I could. So I'm waiting for my quest to arrive, and I'm thinking I'm going to get that hand. But it turns out that these are so much more than your hands, right? They're also your feet. They're how you move around in the environment, right? Uh, they how you interact with the environment, you know. So it's 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 a lot more than that. And you know, when when my quest arrived, I took a good look at these controllers, and I thought to myself, man, those are a lot of buttons, right? It can be a lot to take in. It does take a couple of days to about a week to get used to it. I like to make sure that everybody has like, you know, a good handle on that. But at the same time, you know, I'm also aware that you know, some of you already are comfortable with the controls. So we're gonna do some like, movement exercises and stuff like that to make sure that everybody's like, you know, skilled up and, and the ones that already know what they're doing can still have a good time. 
All right. Now, and if you're here today, you already know the basics. Like, you know, the left thumb stick is going to turn, you know, move you around like this. You know, the right thumb stick is going to turn in these circles like this. And when you combine them, you can get these big, elaborate circles that make my presentation so much more dramatic. If everybody could do that, make these big circles right here. This way, when I look out off the stage, it looks like everybody's ballroom dancing, right? Make it look fancy. Let's have a look here. Let's see how you guys are doing. Oh, that's nice. That's cool. And at this part, I always say, I wish you guys could see what I see. You all know how everybody moving around like that? And it turns out now you can because we've got a YouTube channel now. If you look up at Raven Eye up there, floating up there, right, that's our YouTube camera. You know, if you want to wave out to YouTube to start waving out like that, we got uh, we got R in the in the blue right here. We got uh, K Pelsing in the pink. We got Kellen in the green. Over here, this very sharp yellow and black robot is 6677 Hen. Oh, disappeared. Whoa, I didn't mean to do that. Just touched him and they suddenly vanished. I'm sorry, YouTube. But come on in all space. We have a lot of fun here. Oh, you're still here. All right, cool. I didn't destroy you. I was afraid that I had like the touch of death thing going on. All right, cool. Uh, well, hey, YouTube, how's it going? All right, let's get back to it. All right, now the first thing you want to be aware of, right, is this uh, on the right controller and the left controller, you got this here grip button, right? You got it here and you got it here. Now, this is how you're going to interact with objects in all space. Like you're going to have, you know, basketballs, fireworks, things like that, right? You can even switch back and forth between the hands. I mean, yeah, it's pretty straightforward, but. If you're in a world beta program and you're starting to build worlds with your own two hands, right? Um, you know, you're going to need to be aware when you grab an object in the world editor, it's going to change the behavior of your right thumbstick. No longer is it going to turn you around in these circles, right? But when you move your thumbstick from side to side, it's going to change the scale and the size of the object. When you move the thumbstick forward or backward, it's going to push the object away from you or it's going to pull it closer back to you, right? And while these are a lot of buttons, keep in mind that some of them do the same thing. This select button here, this right trigger, and if you have your left pointer enabled through your main menu, this select button on your left controller, they all do the same thing. Right now, if you hold down your right trigger button, as an example, and move your pointer through the crowd, you're going to see everybody's name tag appear above their head. That's how I know everybody's name so quickly. That's how I know that that's Kellen right there in the green color choice. You got Steph right there, also in green. And you got Jax32 in yellow, right? Just kind of look at that focus concentration. I don't think he's really here. Look at the, look at the head tilt like that, like that. Just the, that stare going on. Just kind of pulling me into it. All right. Uh, sorry about that. We're going to move too into that bit there. All right. Uh, now, let's see. What else do we have here? We have also, you should be aware on the uh, quest, like, let's say you're having a, a standing room scale experience, right? You need to be aware of, like, you know, say you walk out past your menus. For some reason, whenever you walk out past your menus, that's always the time somebody tells you, hey, open your main menu. And you're like, you look around, you're like, oh, where is this thing? Why does this always happen when I'm walking around? And you're looking around and you turn around, and it's like always behind you, right? This can get old pretty quick. It's important to remember that on a quest, you have your main menu in your hands at all time. That's uh, some handy information there, all right? And the way you access it is on your left controller, you've got this flat button right here, right? And when you press on that, your main menu is gonna open up. And you know, when you press on it again, your main menu will close. I'll be very honest with you, I have not used that blue and white triangle on the main menu button there that's next to you. I haven't used that thing in months. All I do when I want to open my menu is I flip my hand out like that and press the button, now my menu's open. I flick it again, now my menu's closed, just like that. So that's a pretty useful way to do that, you know, and this way you don't have to keep track of where that menu wheel is all the time. All right, now uh, also you have this left trigger button, and this left, tr left trigger button is cool because when you squeeze it down, whether you're walking or flying, it causes you to go fast. And if I start going in a circle like this, maybe a bunch of you will join me, and maybe we can start a tornado, maybe a hurricane. If you get dizzy, probably don't do this thing. I just see somebody on my stage. You already I saw that. All right, so you're going around in a circle, you know, whipping around like that. All right, let's see everybody. Let's see, let's see if we can this formation. Let's see how you all do it. All right. Anyone dizzy yet? If you're dizzy, you should probably stop. Ooh, a portal, where are we going? To the east of the roof, really? Oh no, this is more fun. No, generally it's rude to open up portals or events like this, you know, you're not supposed to do that. But the vista roof, you know, I don't know. Maybe I should have chosen a different set. Maybe I gotta rethink everything. All right, well, let's see here. What else do we have? Uh, so yeah, that's how you go fast, right? Now, also in all space, you need to worry about when you're on a quest, you need to worry about your vertical height. Right. Now, first time I came into all space on a quest, I went to the campfire, to try it out, and I was feeling good. You know, I was like floating on air. I was feeling really positive. And oh, another portal. Where are we going now? Quest time. Now, that's a good choice. Excellent choice. But again, it's, it's generally considered rude to open up portals in, in events. So like, no, probably don't do that thing. If you want to re-enter the space, just go to general re-enter space. I don't do that. All right. So uh, you need to, on a quest, you need to worry about your vertical height. Right. So sometimes like, you know, I, if because uh, like I said, I went to the campfire, I felt like I was all up there and I looked and looked down and I realized I'm floating it high off the ground. Right. So if you feel that you're like taller or shorter than other avatars, if somebody's willing to do this for me, like, you know, like kind of stand up a little bit or scooch down or change your vertical height so we can show everybody how to fix that. Here we go. Perfect. Look at RTR over here. And we got a uh, story world 66. Now, if either one of you press down on your left thumbstick, show what happens when you press down on the left thumbstick. Right. You just boom, you drop right down. Let's see. Can you do that too, uh, Miko? There you go. Uh, Miko. Yeah, there we go. Excellent. 
So when you change your vertical height and you feel like you're too tall, you're too short, and you push down on that left thumbstick, it's going to recenter you, and it's going to cause you to, you know, uh, like RGR just demonstrated, it's going to cause you to like snap back right into position. You know, and it's pretty useful because it's like just right there on your left thumbstick, so you can always access it quickly, so you can always adjust your height, you know, whenever you want to. Uh, okay, so what else do we have here? We also have, um, let's see, oh yeah, on either controller you have the teleport button, right? And I'm hoping you're in a line dash teleport because it feels like you're flinging yourself across the room, like think of it as like zip lining, all right? Uh, what you could do is if everybody lines up along this wall here, right, uh, you're going to notice like if you hold down your right control on the teleport button and aim at the floor, you're going to see this blue circle appear, right? And if you aim it across the room by that, uh, by that brick wall there and let go, all of a sudden you go sit, you're going to be thrown right across the room just like that. Everybody teleport on over to me this time, you know, fast as you can. All right, cool. Now, if you take your left controller and you hold down the teleport button on the left controller and aim at the ground back across the room, you'll see that circle on the floor. As soon as you let go, boom, you get thrown right across the room. Some cool things, if you hold down both teleport buttons at once and make an X on the floor and let go at the same time, you kind of zigzag just like that, right? I just kind of zag right into Tucker here, but you guys get the idea, right? Also, if you're like maybe facing the stage like this, you can back up, maybe squeeze that accelerator button on your left trigger, right, and teleport at the floor as you move backwards and you'll be doing the alt space moonwalk. It's pretty cool. Right. Also, you can believe it or not. I just found this out recently. I'm standing here talking to a crowd and I need to get on the stage. And I don't know why I, well, I never tried this before, but I put my hand over my head like that. Right. And I hit teleport button and boom, teleported backwards right onto the stage. Cool. Right. You know, so, you know, you're always still learning this stuff. Uh, the first time I started messing around with this stuff, I, I was at the universe. And back then they had, you know, the event was in a very large world. And when it was over, I went exploring and I looked off the edge of the world. And I looked at the edge. And the next thing you know, it fell off. Right. And I'm falling there as you know, I'm falling I'm like, oh, no, I'm going to respawn, you know, because, you know, I can get hurt in all space. Right. Uh, but I look over and there's as I'm you know, falling and there's this cliff on the other side. Right. And I reach out with my teleporter and I aimed. Right. And I let go. And boom, I was thrown right onto the cliff to safety. And I realized in that moment that I was finally getting used to the controllers. And you will, too. It only takes a couple of days, you know, to a week or so. But there's going to come a point, even though you still feel the plastic of the controllers in your hands, there's going to come a point where these actually become your hands, where you don't actually think about what buttons to push. You just do it. It becomes like an automatic reflex. Like if I say, hey, everybody, look at the info zone, right? Portal, even though I said several times that opening a portal is probably not a good thing to do, right? And I'm pointing at it. I'm not thinking about how to point. If I say, hey, everybody, look out that window, right? You can do that, you know, just by like, it's, you don't even think about what buttons to push, right? So like if you hold down and you go, these gestures, the best way to learn them is by mirroring each other. If you hold down the, like, the right grip button, you'll see that like I'm pointing, right? If you hold down the left grip button with the middle finger there, you'll see I'm pointing with two hands. Give everybody a Brooklyn hello. Everybody kind of give me, a, give me a Brooklyn hello like this, right? Yeah, there you go. Awesome, right? You can put that together and make the Altspace logo. Hold it up and show me some Altspace love, right? And this is a really special moment, right? So let's twist it around, make a camera, and make this moment last forever. Maybe we can squeeze our trigger finger, get a little shutter action going on like that, right? Um, you know, speaking of which, if you hold the triggers, right, both of them down at the same time with the grip button, you're going to get two thumbs up. Right? Maybe I'm not doing a good job. You want to let me know? Two thumbs down. Right? Maybe you're not sure. Maybe get a little bit of both. Maybe do this. I had a guy do this the other day. I thought that was pretty cool. Right? Uh, now, if you touch your thumbs to the buttons or to the thumbsticks, you'll see that the thumbs go down. And you kind of combine this with like a dance book. Right? And then one of the first quest times we ever had, somebody came up to the stage and they were going like this. I thought this was pretty cool. Look at this. We got, we got uh, Miko wants to fight. Right? He's going, all right, because I see him got his gun up there. All right, you ready? Come on, let's go. It's two, it's three against one. Oh no, there's too many, but I can teleport backwards. Boom, just like that, to safety. All right, so yeah, you get the idea. If somebody's doing something cool that you like, just mirror that, mirror them. It's the best way to pick it up. Just copy them and you know, you'll get a handle on it in no time. It comes, it comes pretty quickly. Um, let's see what else do we have here. Um, okay, so when, um, you know, what, the best way to leave all space actually, right? And don't press this button now because if you disappear, I'm going to feel it down deep. Right. Um, but the, like, let's say somebody comes in your space and says, hey, enter's ready. Right. It's pretty important. You need to leave all space in a hurry. Right. You're going to want to do so by pressing this flat button on your right controller. This is the best way out of all space. And when you press it, you're going to see three buttons appear. One will say quit. One will say resume. And, uh, you know, and that's great because if you press it by accident, like let's say you're at the universe and you're dancing around, and you're having a good time. Right. And you press that button by accident. Right. Now, in any screen. And you're like, what do I do? You just press resume, you come back into all space. And by doing that, you know, no one will even notice you were gone. You pick up where you left and you look around. I hope nobody saw that. I hope nobody saw me press that button. I'm still dancing. I'm still dancing. You can do that, right? Um, but this is also good to press when things go wrong. Like, for example, let's say you move your head and the whole world moves with you. That can make you feel pretty dizzy when that happens, right? So you're going to need a quick way. I see somebody's nodding. You experience that, guys? Yeah, that, that's not a great feeling. So what you want to do is you're going to press on that flat button on your right controller, and then you just pr right, press quit. You restart the app, and that's usually going to take care of most things. 
but occasionally you're going to press that button and nothing's going to happen. Like when your device freezes, like you look to the left side of the screen and there'll be a black void there. And you're like, uh oh, there's a problem. And you look up and there's a black void and you're like, oh no, it's spreading. And I look down and I look right and it's a black void everywhere. What do I do? And all my friends are frozen in space like this and I'm panicking. What do I do? What do I do? What you do? And I'm pressing the flat button, nothing's happening. All right. Uh, what you're going to want to do is you're going to need a quick way to restart your headset, right? Now, a lot of people will restart their headset while it's like off of their head. And I used to do that in the beginning, but I found when my device wasn't in a charge cycle and I wouldn't get that charge light and it takes so long to restart, especially when you're in a rush, it kind of can feel like your device is broken. So I got in the habit and I recommend restarting the device while it's still on your head. And the way to do this is you take your index finger and you slide it along the side of your device and you're going to feel this raised up button, right? And then you can take your other index finger and press it against the other side. So you kind of squeeze them together and, and you know, you put your head down in this deep concentration pose and everybody's like, what's Michael, Fe what's Michael Farr is concentrating on, right? And you squeeze them together like that. And after about four seconds, right, you've concentrated so hard, your avatar disappears and you get plunged into the darkness, right? After about 10 seconds, you start wondering, why did Oculus make this take so long? I don't know. 15 seconds go by, you know, you start thinking about friends you haven't seen in years. You, you wonder how they're doing, right? Yeah. 20 seconds go by, you start thinking about life. You know, the big questions. And then out of the darkness, you see the, the white alt space logo. No, not the alt space logo, that'd be cool. You see the Oculus logo appear out of the darkness and you see it start to pulse, right? And when it starts to pulse like that, what you do is you take your fingers away like that and your device will restart normally. You restart the app and this is gonna take care of most of the problems that you're ever gonna have in here. But very occasionally, if something goes seriously wrong, you should be aware of the factory reset option. But be aware that if you have like pictures on your device, you're going to lose all of those if, um, you know, maybe you might lose your Beat Saber scores, stuff like that. You're going to have to reinstall our, all your apps. Good news, you won't have to pay for them again. What had happened to me was I came out of Altspace, and, um, you know, when I came out of Altspace, I saw this notice that said Oculus Home is closing. And there was a blue button that said OK. So I'm like, all right. So I pressed OK. And the screen just said loading. Right? And I was like, what's going on? So I, re I did a deep concentration pose. Right? And I restarted my device. That took care of most everything. And when it came back on, it just still said loading. So nothing was, you know, nothing was happening there. Uh, so I asked Google about it, you know, and Google said that a lot of people were having this problem. The best thing to do was a factory reset. So I did the factory reset, but I lost everything. I lost my pictures, I lost my apps, you know, and it was like getting the quest all over again. Even had to go through the tutorial all over again, you know, which was a lot of fun, you know, so that was kind of worth it. But, uh, you know, you, you don't, the good news is you don't have to repay for those apps, though. But uh, this is going to take care of most of your problems, all right? Um, now, if you're here today, you're already familiar with the Guardian system because you've done the tour, you dance with the robot, you know, you played with that blimp and all that kind of stuff. But there are some ways you can use the Guardian system to your advantage in all space. But before, before I talk about that, I want you to be aware that, like, if you mess with your Guardian all, be very careful because a lot of times in all space, you'll see somebody walking along, they're having a good day, right? And then all of a sudden, they go, boom, they hit a wall in the real world, right? That doesn't feel too good. You don't want to hurt yourself. You don't want to damage your equipment either. Right. So, uh, but what you can do, so I like to say, was when you mess around with your Guardian, especially in the beginning, lead with your hands. Like, you know, walk out, kind of feel your boundary a little bit, right? And you're going to see that, you know, white mesh appear in the air. Now, listen, even if you're on another device, if you experience dizziness in VR, one of the best things you can do is take your hand, look at your hand like this, focus on it till the dizziness passes. And once it passes, slowly take your hand away and take in the world around you and see how you feel. All right, that can help. But you can also use your guardian system to do this too. What you do is you walk up to your guardian, right? And as soon as that white netting appears in the air, like oh, that, you know, that fence, right? You know, or that grid, you know, when that appears in front of you, you can still move your thumbsticks around, right? And when you're moving your thumbsticks around, uh, your, your avatar is moving in VR, even though you're still in the real world. Like right now, I'm still against that wall, right? And what I can do is I can go up to this display here, right? And I can line it up with my real world wall, just like that, right? And now I have a frame of reference. So as I'm moving around in VR, I'm having, my, you know, my adventure, my time, and all of a sudden I've gone too far. And oh no, I've fallen off the stage. I'm in the audience. And maybe the audience is hostile, right? Maybe the audience starts messing with me, sticking their hands in my face, doing things like that. Oh, you guys are really polite. Ooh, got the finger right there. That's cool. But what's happening is I can still see, you'll notice I'm not breaking my sentences, that none of this is overly distracting, because I can still see that display right there, right? Now, no matter what you guys do, I mean, that's a big screen, guys. Come on, you're going to have to try harder than this. Wow. This is, you know, for such a big group, I thought you guys would put more into it. The last group was much more effective. I can still see that display. You guys aren't even trying. All right. Okay. Okay. So that way this works, is, and it doesn't have to be something big like a screen like that. What you can do is you can use like the edge of a desk or a table and line it up with the edge of the stage here. And this is basically like an anchor to the real world. You know, it's going to give you a frame of reference, and this is going to help you, if, especially just starting out and you get busy in VR, this can help a lot with that. All right. Also, um, you know, you can also transition from a room scale to a seated experience in VR pretty effortlessly. Like, let's say I'm up here and I'm like, you know, I've been hosting events all day. I'm exhausted. 
I don't think I can go on. I think I need to sit down. On it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to my guardian, right? And I'm going to look, make sure I got enough room to move my head through. And when I move my head through, the pastor camera goes off, right? And I see, oh, I got my coffee right here. I can drink my coffee, right? That's cool. That's really good. And then I look, I got my chair over here, right there. And I'm going to go walk over to my chair, right? I'm going to turn around, and then there's a blue button asking if I want to have a seated experience. So I sit down there, and I hit, you know, the blue button, and I'm now having a seating experience. As soon as I press that blue button, I find that not only am I still in VR, but I'm still in all space. And this works in the other direction, too. You're going to notice, like, there's this one time I was moderating an event, right? And as I'm moderating, I got this urge to get up and walk around, you know? So I figured I'd try it. And I figured I'd get up and I'd walk into my guardian. It's normally like that. Right. Um, but, you know, every now and then the quest can lose your guardian because like maybe it's like, you know, it's lost tracking. It's not sure of its position and it just wants you to, you know, paint a new boundary, which normally isn't a big deal. But there was two minutes left in the event. Right. And, you know, if I had to get, you know, I wouldn't be able to get back in. So I started drawing that boundary and I'm like, you know, of all the days that I had to moderate for an why did it have to be today? And then I'm drawing it around I'm like, why is my place so big? I just don't understand. And then, you know, I'm drawing around and I close the loop there. And when that grid popped up out of the ground, I found not only was I still in VR, but I was still in all space. All anybody's going to see is your avatar frozen like this. Now, you know what? I always pause there, right? And one time I actually lost my net connection right in that moment when I went like this. And everybody's like, and the audience, they're looking up they're like, wow, you're really into this role. And it's invested in it, you know, look at it. Look at that dramatic pause. Have you ever seen anything like it? Right. So, uh, you know, that was, it was pretty funny. I came back to I me mean, anyway. It was still here. It was cool. But, uh, you know, yeah, that can happen. But yeah, but the main point here is when you actually, you know, change your guardian from a standard to a, to a room scale or a seated experience, you'll still be able to stay in all space. All right. And this way, you know, maybe you'd be comfortable staying longer that way. It's pretty cool. All right. Uh, also, and all right, this is not useful information. It's just cool. Well, you know, when you stick your head outside of the boundary, make sure you got enough room to do it. And that past your camera goes off and you can see the real world. Right. What's, uh, what you can do is if you do this really slow, you'll see, be able to see both realities at the same time. And this is cool because when you see all space avatars in your home environment, you'll get a good idea of the scale. Like I never realized avatars were so tall, like six feet tall, right? They're also like really wide too. It's like when you see them in your, in your living room, you know, or your office or, you know, wherever you VR, you know, and you see them in a familiar environment, it really, I don't know, it kind of changes the way you see them. It's kind of, it's kind of a neat experience. I recommend trying it. I just see everybody fly through the past the window. Okay, that was cool. All right, uh, moderators must be moving around. Okay, let's see here, what do we got? Uh, also, the great thing about the Quest is it just works, right? Um, there's some great accessories that can make it work better, uh, like the earbuds that hang down from the sides, right? You know, they kind of look fancy, I think, because they look like earrings for your headset. I don't know what I look like when I'm in VR, but I'm wearing these things, I think I look fancy, right? First time I wore these things, I went to the campfire. You guys know there's a breeze in the campfire? Man, I thought the sound of the Quest was really good, right? There's no, there's no feedback, everyone's rich and clear, it's, it's a great sound system. But like, I didn't know there was a breeze, and I went over to the fence there, and I heard the water rushing. All right, I, I've been in all space for like a year, and I had no idea there was like all these ambient sounds that can make the experience so much more immersive. You know, so the, the headphones definitely were trying out. You also have these face inserts, like you find that the Quest is uncomfortable. Now listen, a lot of people think that. A lot of people think that the Quest is uncomfortable when they first get it. I was one of those actually. I know somebody who returned uh, the Quest because of this. Oculus doesn't advertise this enough. But your headset goes through a breaking in period. The oils in your face actually soften the insert, right? And it can take some time to adjust to it, right? So if you're gonna if you get the urge to modify your device, and a lot of people do, like inside, like you know, the first couple of days they're using, like this is so uncomfortable, and they start looking at counterbalances and external battery packs that they can put on it to change the balance and change the weight. Uh, the problem with that is if you do it too soon before the breaking in period is up, then the breaking in period is over, and you find that the balance is off again. And you're like, this thing just is uncomfortable. And really, it's just that you got to give your time, yourself time to get to know your headset, and you got to give your headset time, you know, to adjust to you and adjust to your face and things like that. And uh, you know, it, it becomes a better experience. And if after a couple of weeks of using it, you still find it's uncomfortable, then you can check out those things, right? And they can really help change the experience. Like these face inserts make things a lot more comfortable. It's like your face is in a pillow, man. It's really nice. All right. Um, and now you also have these prescription inserts that protect the lenses and your headset. And speaking of protecting your headset. It's a good idea if you get one of these travel cases. The, the box that the Quest comes in is really great, but if you're gonna be moving around a lot, it's a good idea to use a travel case because you wanna keep your device safe. Because listen, if something happens to your device, it's not like losing your toaster. If you let us spend a lot of time in alt space or a lot of time in VR and you've made like, you know, friends and stuff like that, right? It's gonna feel like you're gonna register it as a deep sense of loss. I've seen it happen. So good, take good care of your equipment. If you wanna try any one of these accessories, we made them easy to find. Um, you can go to altvr.com. I go up to where it says channels, and if you do that, you're going to be taken to our event page, and you're going to see uh, where it says Raven Hall events. You'll see, it, like it says, up in the sound booth there. Uh, you'll, so you see all these, you know, all space events. You see Raven Hall events, and you click on that, and there you're going to see all these products listed on the left-hand side. Uh, so that's where we put them if you want to give any of them a try. 
Also, there's a join Discord button if you want to help us, you know, put on events like this. And also in the upper right is the most important button on the internet. It's a subscribe button. We don't get paid to do this, but every time we see that number go up, it makes us feel good. It's a nice way to say thank you. And it lets all space know that you enjoy our content. All right, let's see. Now we're already taking your questions or your comments or anything like that. Uh, we're gonna make it so that a raise hand button appears on your lower right, as if by magic, right? Right there. You just press that raise hand button to get on a list. And while we're waiting for that to fill up, if you guys are on Twitter and you wanna follow us, you can find us at underscore, underscore, Uncanny Valley. I know it looks like one underscore, but it is actually two. All right, let's see. We got some people on the list here. Let's see what we got. We've got uh, TikTok is real, or TikTok is oh TikTok is real, and then they disappeared. Somebody said something about that in the beginning. All right, what's up? What's up, TikTok? Where are you? Okay, on the air. Should be on the air. Check the list again. Maybe you can press the button. There you go. What's what, up? What is this about? Wait. When did you come in? I thought I've been doing pretty good for the past half hour. Anybody, you know, anybody know that I, uh, know what this is about? Did I convey that properly? Okay, you must have come in late. This is an event for Quest users uh, where we go over, you know, different things. It's coming at an end, but we're also going to teach people how to fly. We also got this really cool effect coming up when we press this big red button. So that's not to be missed. You might want to stick around for that. Let's see who else do we have here. We have uh, Miko Mako. You're on the air. What's up? Miko Mako, where are you? Miko, speak to me. All right. My bad, uh, hold on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, during this, I was hoping you mentioned um, the, the Oculus um, Link cable that um, came up back in November. Yes, the Oculus Link cable is awesome, right? Uh, um, you can try the inexpensive one that's about 12 or $14. The main cable is about 18 The benefit of it is it's a much longer code, uh, code. It's a much longer cable, and it has better graphics. Um, and it offers, offers you uh, Rift S experiences. You know, you can use the, the Rift F, uh, Rift F, listen to me, the Rift S, you know, have Rift S experiences, Rift like, you know, uh, apps that you can get from the store and interact with uh, your computer. And it's a, it's really, it's a, it's a really amazing experience. Have you tried it, Miko? Have you tried the link cable? And if so, what do you think? Or you, you're no longer on the list there. You press the raise hand button on here, your experience with it. Yeah, let's see, I'm gonna get you on back on the air there. Okay, you're on the air. What'd you think of it? Have you tried it? Did you try it? Yeah, actually, I didn't buy it. One of my friends has an Oculus. I'm a, has a PC, mm -hmm. and I'm a, he had like a, he happened to have like a long cable. Yeah, honestly, yeah, I, it, it, it's, it's like having great. two different devices. It really is because I'll go back and forth between the cable and the, you know the standalone Quest, and it, you know, like the, the way I have it set up uh, for the Quest when it's in just in Quest mode is completely different than when it's cooked up to the computer. So it really is like having two separate headsets. It's really pretty cool. I really like that it on that. You know, I can't recommend trying that enough. All right, let's see. We have Tucker. Tucker, you have a question or a comment or something like that? You're on the air. Tucker, where are you? I don't see you. I'm right here. You're right here. I see you, Tucker, um, in the blue. What's going on? I have a question about the cable. So, you have a question about the cable? Okay. So can you, like, get games on your computer and then plug it into your Quest? Uh, I think I, I'm not hearing you very well. Your volume is very low. You might want to aim at your microphone and make sure that the volume's up, like say three, because it is very low. Um, but I think you're asking if you can install apps on the computer and those are then playable on the Quest when you're using the little cable. Is that it? Did I get that right? Are you gone? Tucker? Tucker, speak to me. I need to know. Oh man, you're frozen. All right, this isn't good. All right. I can't reach them all. I failed as an event host. I have to rethink this. All right, maybe I can uh, redeem myself here. We got Con Boss. Con Boss, what's up? You're on the air. Where are you? Where are you, Con Boss? I don't see you. Scanning the crowd. I don't see you. Con Boss, where are you? No? Okay. All right, well, maybe, maybe you pressed the button by accident. That can happen. We've got time for, let's see, one more because we're running a little bit over. Rekid. Rekid, what's your question? Comment or. Have you tried the, um, the, um, the linkable for it? Or... Have I tried the what? The link what? Linkable for the um, quest. <clears throat> Hello? Have I tried the, the Hello? quest cable for Link? The, the, <laughs> yeah. link, the link cable. The host is yes. called on you. Yes, mm -hmm. I tried it. Uh, I tried both cables actually. I tried the entry level when it was in beta, I think I'm and I tried the, the official cable, right? And <laughs> honestly, for like, like a $70 like, difference, it's not a like green difference. The biggest difference is cable length. What's up? Hi. Hi. I'm a big fan. Hi, Tom Boss. What's up? You had a question? <laughs> Tom a Boss. Fan. I'm a big fan of you. Uh, can you do me a favor? Can you come back around in the summer? I'm going to have need of a big fan in the summer when the temperature goes up. Yeah. Summer? Big fan. 
You're in the summer now. Big fan. Get it. Oh, oh, come on. Get it. Work with me. Oh, wow. No emojis. Wow. Really, people? Okay, that's the button. If I didn't call on you and you still have a question or a comment, don't worry. Oh, we're going to keep this going uh, at the Ravenhill Flight Academy where we teach everybody to fly. Is the stage bubbling? All okay. right. That was weird. Okay. That was pretty weird, Apparently, man. My mods, are, my, my mods are up to it again. All right. Whoa. Bro, it's happening mod. again. Can I be a mod? Bubble. Yeah, of course you can. You just join our Discord and call out before the event and we'll get you on. All right. We're going to press this button. And oh, yeah. we do one of our Ravenhall talent hovercrafts. Enough with the bubbles, Fury. Really? Come on. Uh, what's going to happen is uh, one I of press our that hovercrafts going to fly other down hand? the tree. And you can actually fly these. And it's going to go up over the trees. It's going to land in the yard right there. And it's really hard to do this with the bubbles. It really is. All right. So uh, Wait, why is the power press this button. Keep your attention out the window right here. Ravenhall talent aircraft en route to your position. There we go. Isn't that cool? All right. All right. So now, uh, if you guys have learned anything here today, please share whatever you come in contact with. Come to me in this yard area here. We'll we'll meet the talent as it lands, and then we'll go over, teach you guys how to fly if you don't know. And we'll be taking more questions if you want more bubbles. Really loud. Okay. And uh, it's coming down now. Let's see. We can meet it. Very cool. All right. There we go. Right. Talon Aircraft cool is now boarding Thank outside for transport to the Raven Hall Flight Academy. Please exit and, uh, the building and step into the blue fly. light. Thank you. And see you next time.